Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We are chatting with Steve Todorok, investment executive and geologist over at Sprott Global. Now, it's been a little while since we had Steve back on the show, a number of months actually, and just to catch everybody up to speed, when we are chatting with Steve, due to compliance issues, we are not able to talk about stocks currently trading. However, we can allude big picture sense to different areas, different exploration plays that have that has Steve excited and overall Steve you are very focused on discovery place so companies that are early on in the discovery process have either just made the discovery hole or are working on drilling out and expanding on a very near-term discovery that brings us I guess to the first question broad outlook for 2022 it's been a tough year last year for resource investors especially precious metals investors there were a handful of stocks that did very well but there were hundreds of stocks that did not do well and shed a lot of their share price and market cap 2022 when it comes to discoveries what has you excited what do you think is possible for this sector Hey, Corey. Happy New Year. <clears throat> Sorry if I'm a little stuffy. I'm, I'm in British Columbia and it's very cold and there, there's a lot of dry heat here. So I might sound a little stuffy. I'm not used to this. I guess the thing that uh, gets me most excited about the upcoming year are metal prices. Uh, that's where it all starts. Um, gold prices are very good. Uh, big mining companies are, are making good profits. It's not necessarily reflected in their share price, but I'm not necessarily focused on the major. So I, I really don't don't get too caught up in how their share prices are. I just want to know that they're financially healthy, uh, good operating companies. Uh, same thing with copper, same thing with a lot of the metal prices right now. So that sets the stage for a, a pretty healthy year if, if we hang on to these metal prices. And as I've mentioned before, uh, if the major mining companies are doing good, that should trickle down to the juniors. We're certainly seeing a tremendous amount of money in, in the, the hands of the juniors, which allows them to go out and, and keep drilling, advancing their projects. And, you know, most important for me are the, uh, the companies that are out trying to make those new discoveries, uh, you know, doing soil sampling, basal till sampling, geophysical surveys, you know, dressing up anomalies to next come out and, and drill test and hoping to make that next discovery. The vast majority of juniors uh, are out drilling properties that have been around for a long time there's been known deposits on them they're trying they start out usually drilling some confirmatory drill holes right in the middle of what they know they're going to get some of the some of those are, are called director's holes and then uh, they'll eventually get around to drilling the outside edges even if they grow those old deposits bigger most of the time they don't or if they are able to grow them it, it's more of the same it's probably low grade um, but eventually they they get to the point where they they're forced to go out and drill some of these other outlying anomalies, and that's that's what I'm waiting for. Uh, so I, I think we're going to see a lot of drilling over the new year. We're still waiting, you know, for a lot of drill results from last year from a lot of the companies. Assay turnaround in the assay labs has been horrific because juniors have so much money, as well as the majors are sending so many samples to assay labs. It's commonly taking over eight weeks you know, to get drill results and in some cases even longer. So, you know, we, we could have a, a, a big discovery in the making, you know, in the pipeline right now and might get it announced in the next one or two months, but certainly that'll carry over to uh, 2022. There'll be a lot of drilling and a lot of exploration. So I'm, I'm very upbeat on, on you know, what's going to unravel for the coming year. Yeah, Steve, you really summed it up well there. There's, there's a lot of companies we've talked to that have been waiting since the summer for their drill assays. I mean, I'm talking July, August, they're still waiting on them. So I think we'll have an active winter season of what happened last year. And maybe there were some discoveries made that uh, we don't even know have happened yet. But when you're looking at these discovery plays and you're really uh, great at isolating them early and getting in on that trend, what does it take for you, let's say in a copper or a gold explorer, for them to have a discovery hole that really piques Steve's interest? what is it big enough or economic enough where you think, okay, they may be onto something here? Well, I'd like to see for gold, you know, a good 150 meters, one and a half grams gold or wider. And those don't happen very often. That's, that's what I'll wait for. Because if you get anything less than that, you know, maybe you got a chance at a million ounces of gold. 
a good grade, and that's my minimum threshold. I, I don't go looking for a million ounce potential deposit. I, I want something that's going to be big enough for one of the the bigger companies to come along and take them over. And they're very selective, as we're seeing. You know, takeover activity is, has been active. I would say it's really active, but we're certainly seeing a you know Anglo Gold uh, took over Corvus Gold here a number of months ago. You know, we're we're not seeing many of those uh, for copper. Uh, one of the, the the best or most significant new copper discoveries in the last 10 to 15 years at least started out with about 1,000 meters of 1% copper equivalent starting right at surface. You know, followed up by lots of holes that are, you know, call it five to 700 meters to 1,000 meters of a half percent to 1%, you know, moving over from that discovery drill hole and the stock's gone from under $2 that just broke $17, I think, last week. You know, you don't get many of those, but if if you are lucky enough or you have the ability to get in on those early, you know, you're you're happy. Oh, they're going to be huge money made when you can get in early on some of these discovery plays. But when you're talking about discovery plays, you're also looking at the end game here, which is usually a buyout. I know you're looking for a liquidity event where a company comes in, a bigger company, to take over that company, preferably at a premium and also preferably when the stock is still trending higher. But Steve, as you said, these companies that could be on the acquisition front, they're being very, very selective. It, it really seems like one million ounces of gold isn't what it used to be five, ten years ago. Even two, three million ounces. There are a lot of companies out there that have those resources. What in your eyes are the majors looking for right now? What are some of the metrics that you think are critical for a company to have to be a takeover target? Well, when you back up and just take, you know, I guess drive the point higher, as, as time goes on, the bigger companies keep getting bigger and bigger. So, so their, their threshold moves higher to move the needle. Um, I want to say in the 1980s, 1990s, a lot of the big companies were, were mining 100,000 ounces of gold a year, and that was fine. You know, and now we're saying a million ounces is too small for the most part. And that's just because they keep getting bigger and bigger. They'd rather have one, they'd rather have one, you know, call it 10 million ounce mine rather than 10 mines they got to operate that are only generating a million ounces a year. So, you know, I, I do expect the threshold to keep moving higher, but along, you know, while that's happening, you're probably going to see new gold mining producers start up. They're going to, you know, big companies are going to take over their one or two million ounce deposit today. So the the uh, the small company is going to you know try raising the money, do the permitting, and build the mine themselves. And some of those will work out, and some will be disasters. You know, and the ones that work out, those are the new mining companies that start to evolve. It's it's always been that way. So I expect that trend to continue. You know, it's just making sure you're involved in in the the company that's going to succeed, build that mine successfully you know, on time, on budget, and then operated efficiently. You know, so like you said, it's always been that way, and I think we'll continue to see that. Well, Steve, how much does jurisdiction play into when you look at these investments? Because we have seen some companies develop some pretty big resources, but sometimes they're in South America, Africa, parts of the Middle East, you know. So does that dissuade you from getting in on a discovery story if it's a tough jurisdiction? Absolutely. It's got, if it's in a tough jurisdiction, it's got to be absolutely spectacular looking from day number one um, we're certainly seeing more and more investors shy away from the african countries because you know uh, country risk terrorism political risk has has definitely been increasing it wasn't that long ago you know five years ago ten years ago where a country like burkina faso was in west africa was uh, viewed upon very favorably you know you could go down make a discovery or or drill and grow deposit big enough, you could get your permitting done quite quickly and efficiently. I think in a, in a pretty short span of time, Burkina Faso sort of permitted something like seven or eight gold mines quite quickly. That's unheard of. But terrorism is, has moved from the Middle East over to West Africa. You know, now we're getting all kinds of, you know, bad stuff happening there. It's like, for the most part, the mines there aren't spectacular. They're good. They're solid. But, you know, again, my, my exit is, is usually I want to see a, a major, preferably a North American mining company coming in to take us over. And you're certainly not seeing many North American miners saying we're okay moving into West Africa to set up shop. 
Hasn't that been a trend on the flip side of that, Steve, is where even the miners that are in some of these, what are generally considered riskier jurisdictions, they're actually trying to further diversify into these more long-term, well-known, safer jurisdictions. I feel like we've seen uh, some of that happening over the last couple of years. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're seeing, but you know, the other flip side to that is where are they going to go? They'd all love the, the big companies all, would all love to move into Canada or Nevada or Australia, uh, places like that. But there's there's so little for them to acquire. It's a catch twenty two. They don't want to go to these high risk countries, but it's almost like they need to. Somehow they got to figure out how to move into those countries and and uh, operate safely. And that's a. I'm glad I'm not involved in that decision making process. Yeah, I don't envy their decision process either, Steve. Well, let me ask you another one on discovery. So there's a, you know, if it's a newer grassroots company, they've got a good target. They've done that good groundwork that you mentioned, the geochem, the the different magnetic surveys, the IP surveys, and it looks like they've got a good target. They go out there, they drill it, and it looks like a promising discovery hole. But we've seen that game played before too, where it looks good out of the gates, everybody gets excited. And then they followed up with some holes that underwhelm the market. And then they end up just having an average deposit and they maybe just got lucky and drilled through something at a different angle or, or they, they happen to just to hit something that's an anomaly. How do you separate the wheat from the chaff? Obviously, you got to see follow-up work, but how do you know on a discovery hole if it's just going to be a fizzler afterwards? You don't. You know, I've drilled one hole wonders myself and I've, I've watched a number of them that, that have been drilled. So again, you use the word a promising discovery drill hole or i think you said promising i don't want promising i want a no-brainer i want it to hit me over the forehead like this is an extremely good drill hole like that thousand meters of one percent copper type of thing you know if, if it's promising to me that just means encouraging you know and, and that's fine you know if you drill a, a promising or encouraging drill hole, i want to see the company move move over 100 meters or whatever and step out try and hit it again see if you can get something better that is really good encouraging does usually doesn't get me excited you know i want to see that first really good drill hole you know if you get something like a thousand meters of one percent and you just look at the interval by interval if that's uniformly distributed throughout that thousand meters chances are pretty good you got your teeth into something very real and legitimate Steve, what about as companies kind of progress through a discovery too? Obviously, uh, takeout earlier rather than later is always better in my eyes, even though I know uh, investors can get mad at companies saying, oh, they took the money too early. They took the takeout too early. I think if you are uh, a takeout target and you are getting taken out at all time highs, people can't argue about that. But as companies move through, let's say a discovery and then a resource and then growing the resource and then even moving into economic studies, when does it get almost too long in the teeth for you to say that, you know what, maybe a company isn't going to come in and take this out and maybe this company is going to have to build this thing? Yeah, you know, ideally, you know, I I use an example like Aurelian Resources, the big gold discovery down in, in Ecuador around 2006, 2008. That was magical from my perspective, you know, get in on the discovery drill hole announcement. I think it was around $3 a share. And within two years, they drilled it out. and It's close to 10 million ounces of gold and Kinross comes in and takes them over. And I'm waving goodbye with a big smile on my face. I don't need to wait for that. Ex- all those extra complexities, permitting and, you know, social unrest and political risk and, and all that stuff, you know, with it, with a team that hasn't done it before. Ideally, it, it takes about two years to drill out a deposit. If they're going to defy the odds, and you've got a big deposit. I'd just as soon get out right then. But that doesn't happen, you know, very often. Usually, they, they've got to keep advancing the project. You know, as we saw here recently with Predium Resources, I think they built mine and were in production for close to three years before Nucus came along here uh, recently and said, okay. We're in, we're comfortable. It's a 325,000 ounce a year producer. That's very good, but that's what we're paying for. We're paying for a 325,000 ounce a year producer, not a 500,000 ounce producer. So, you know, sometimes you've got to wait that long. Now, again, it depends what, you know, say using Predium, if you got in whatever it was uh, 10, 12 years ago, when they first started out, I think they did their IPO at $6. If you got in back then and, and you're, you know, sitting there and it, the stock's $10, $12, $15, you're still up on your investment. 
you know, and, and you can sleep good as far as country risk goes. Um, so if, if you've been in that long and, and you're up, you're okay waiting. You don't mind waiting while well, you've got a, you know, other stocks that are doing different things in your portfolio, you know, but if you got into a, a predium kind of recently, you know, hoping for takeover, you know, you're, not, you don't have as much patience, you know, cause you, you haven't really, you're not up on your investment that much. So it really it depends on when you get into it. Uh, but the, you get the whole spectrum. We just, we just saw recently, I think it, you, it's probably the latest takeover, um, Kinross taking over Great Bear Resources. Great Bear, some people are scratching their head. Great Bear hasn't even announced a resource. A lot of us have a pretty good idea how many ounces we think are in that deposit. But it's extremely rare for a big company like Kinross to come in and take over a junior before a resource estimate's even announced. You know, believe me, Kinross has crunched their own numbers. They've done their own in-house resource estimate, and they're obviously... You know, comfort, comfortable enough. A lot of people are scratching their head, but you know, it, it, you, you get the whole spectrum when you can when you can see takeovers. Very true. Great bear, real success story at the end of the year with that deal being announced. One thing to note too is the great bear has been very open with all of their drill results. Right, they issue and well, you have access to full drill core results. So I guess that does help majors, everybody to build out a resource. Final question then, Steve, look, I realize that you isolate a lot of companies and you push a lot of companies to the side because they're just not exciting drill plays or discovery plays for you. Approximately in your eyes, how many good discovery plays are there out there? Well, I guess a couple ways to answer that good discovery plays that as far as I'm concerned are, that are happening and being advanced right now, 10 to 12, maybe 15 are what I would say are, are good legitimate discoveries that are for the most part brand newish. You know, the company went in and, and drilled that initial discovery drill hole. They didn't go in and acquire a property that's been around the block for decades. And, you know, they're trying to grow their bugs bigger, legitimate new discoveries for the most part. Um, I'd say there's 10, maybe 15 at most. Okay. Steve, it's always great chatting with you. We take a lot of time even before recording just to pick your brain on these markets. And it's one thing you've also offered to our listeners is that they can contact you with any questions on individual companies and you can work more on a one-on-one -on -one basis with them. So it's one thing, Steve, I really appreciate how close you are to a lot of these companies, how closely you follow all of them and truly how selective you are. Steve, thank you very much for your time today. I look forward to chatting with you throughout this year. And hey, hopefully there are a handful of discoveries, quality discoveries that are made this year. Thanks for your time, Steve. Have a great rest of your week. Okay, thanks, guys.